Hey guys, it's Shasha Cardinal off road, and today I'm going to show you how to take the 231 transfer case out of your GTJ and put a 241 uh, with a 4 to 1 ratio in it. Before I do, make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel, check out my other videos, and hit that thumbs up. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is uh, remove your skid plate, which I've already done. Now, my skid plate I made door hooks on the inside of the frame because uh, I didn't want to run nut certs. But yours will actually have some nut certs all the way along this frame. Uh, I want to say four. So you want to take those out, but before you do, you're going to want to make sure you support the transmission and transfer case. So. What you can do is get you some blocks of wood and you can actually support it up front here um, before you drop the transfer case or uh, yeah the skid plate. And the reason you want to do that is because the skid plate is actually holding your transmission and your transfer case up. So if you drop that skid plate, this is all going to fall down. So make sure you support it. Um, now mine's actually being supported from the cross member and the yoke's just laying on it so that's what's holding it up right now but what i'm going to do here in a minute is actually put a jack up against this uh, transmission um, that way it'll support and i can move it up and down because um, you have to move it down a little bit to get to some of these bolts up top which we'll get to here in a little bit so support your transmission um, with some blocks and a jack up front there and then Remove, I want to say they're like three quarters probably. Um, remove your bolts and drop your skid plate down. Now, skid plate will have some weight to it, so watch it. And especially if you haven't had it down already, there's going to be a bunch of mud and stuff up on top of that. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and remove this connector. Um, now, this should be here somewhere up on the transfer case. Um, I don't know if it'll be in the exact same spot as mine. Now this is pretty simple. There's a red connector right there and that needs to come out um, in order to pull this out. So I'm probably going to set the camera down and then I'll pull that out and I'll show you. Okay, so all I did was take a pair of pliers. I grabbed a hold of that piece of red uh, plastic right there and I just pulled out a little bit. It doesn't need to come out real far. Now you can also use a straight screwdriver because it's got a lip and you just kind of twist the screwdriver and that should pop out. Once that does, it should slide right off. All right, now we're gonna come to the front of the transfer case um, where your linkage is hooked up. And if you look up top here, there's gonna be another connector. Now this connector is pretty easy. At this little tab here, you're just gonna pull that up and that'll pop out like that. So that little connector there, you just pull that up and it'll pop out. Um, then the next thing is you look up here and you have a breather hose. And this is gonna be a, it's kinda hard to see. I'm about to set the camera down for this one too. But on the back side here, there's two little prongs and you'll want to squeeze those together. This is kinda like a compression. Um, hose clamp uh, similar to the ones like on a radiator all you're gonna do is squeeze those two ears together and then that will loosen this clamp you'll actually see it expand out and then you're gonna pull that hose off okay so here's a close-up of this clamp so like I said you have these right here and all you do is take a pair of pliers and you squeeze them together and it'll expand that ring around there and it will slip off Alright, so the next thing I want to do is remove the Novak cable shifter from the transfer case uh, selector, swi selector switch or rod or whatever you want to call it. Um, now, if yours is stock, you're not going to have this Novak cable, cable switch cable shifter. Um, you're going to have some, um, ah, jeez, trying to think, lost my train of thought. 
um, you're gonna have some rot or some linkage. There we go. You're gonna have some linkage going around um, that connects up to the body. Um, that'll obviously connect up to your shifter that's inside the cab, which is right there. And then it's kind of like a Z or something like that, or a V that comes down. The issue with that is the linkage sometimes will slip because um, there's like a set screw on the back or a bolt, and if that comes loose when you go to move that. Um, forward or backwards, however you want to do it, depending on what uh, gear you're going in, uh, it'll actually slide and it won't engage your lever on your transfer case, which is right here. So if you haven't switched to Novak cable, switcher, cable shifter, I can't talk today, um, definitely do so. It's a cheap upgrade and you will never ever have to mess with this again. Guarantee you um, there's just nothing that can really go wrong here. Uh, it's all solid and it's just built off a cable. You can adjust it to where you need it and then you're done. So back on to what we were doing. Um, so I went ahead, there's a cotter pin on the back side here. I took that out. And then I gotta get that pin out right there. So I'm gonna stick the screwdriver and I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Maybe not. Maybe. Okay, see that pin right there? And then you can see the hole where the cotter pin went through. Now, and when you take everything off, try to keep an eye on where it is. There's a lot of little pieces, um, some bolts and stuff like that. All right, that is off. We're not gonna mess with this. Um, right now it's in too high, we're gonna leave it there. Um, even though I'm not putting this transfer case back in. All right. All right, so all the bolts are off. This will just pop off like that, and then we can just put it over there. And that's what it looks like. So you got all your bolts off. I got a broken bolt, so I'm gonna have to take that out. Um, it's actually been broke for a while, but I'm gonna go and take it out this time and fix that. All right, so I probably could have done this sooner. It doesn't really matter. Um, these steps don't have to be any any particular order per se I guess but um, as far as what I've done so far now what I want to do next is go and take my drive shafts off now the fronts already disconnected you need to take them both off um, obviously because they're both connected to the transfer case which we are trying to take out um, so depending on what kind of transfer case you got, drive shafts are going to come off differently if you got a flange or if you got a yoke. Um, but pretty much the same concept, you should have to take about four bolts off um, and then the drive shaft should pull off. So we got to do that, otherwise we're not going to drop the transfer case. Next thing that we want to do um, is unbolt the transfer case from the transmission. But before we do so, it's a good idea to go around and just check to make sure that there's no wires or anything hooked up um, to the transfer case. So, um, otherwise, when you get that off, it might get hung up when you're trying to take it down. So, let's see if I can show you here. Where's that? Um, okay. So, you can see right here, uh, you have a stud that comes through, and then there's a nut on it. You should have, I believe it's six of these. Um, so you have like one here, one here, and then the other one's going to be kind of hard to see, but it's up here. And then if you go on the other side, um, you got the same thing. You have three on the other side. Um, sometimes when you take these out, the stud will come with it, and that's okay. Um, just go and take it out, and then when you get it all done, you can always take the nut off the stud, and then put the stud back into the transfer case. So don't be alarmed if this thing, this whole thing starts spinning. Um, last time I took this transfer case out, I want to say one or two of these actually came, the whole stud came out. So it's not a big deal. Um, you can support the transfer case um, if you want, but honestly what I do is I take the lower ones loose and then I take, um, so I'll leave this one loose and then I'll take this one all the way out. 
this one all the way out and then I'll do the same thing on the other side and then I'll loosen these and as long as the studs are still in there it should stay on the transmission um, but it's a good idea to keep these nuts on just in case that wants to slide back um, and then when I get all these out and then I loosen these up I'm just gonna hold on the transfer case and just pull it out myself so I'm not gonna use no jack or anything like that um, you can use a jack if you want to but uh, these transfer cases ain't that heavy um, and I've taken this out many times I usually just um, pull it out and then pick it up put it on the bench so now if you're pulling one out like a Cummins or something like that uh, they're a little bit heavier so um, but these transfer cases are pretty small so like I said if you want to use like a transmission jack or just a floor jack to support it and let it down that's perfectly fine what I usually do though is lay underneath of it and hold pressure on it and then I'll let them out and then I'll just kind of pick it up a little bit slide it off and then drop it down so I'm going to go ahead um, and take these bolts out. I'm not going to be able to do it with a camera. Just kind of, it's kind of hard to hold it and kind of get in the right spot. Okay, so I've got the nuts off. Um, I had one that the stud came out on the other side. Um, not a big deal. So I left um, the bottom nut on right there. I'm going to go ahead and take that off and as well as the other side. Now one thing you might have to do is let this transmission down a little bit to get to those top bolts so it's a little tricky getting those top ones um, you can try to use a ratchet but you gotta watch it because um, that ratchet will actually um, on the other side it will bottom out on the back there and then you can't get it out so you almost have to use a wrench um, once you get them loose though they should come come loose pretty easy so I'm going to go ahead and take those bottom nuts off and then I'm going to pull the transfer case out. Make sure when you do, um, I already support it on a jack stand. I wouldn't leave it on a jack because the jack can kind of roll around on you. Okay, so I took this nut and on the other side I loosened them pretty much where there was just a few threads on. And then I took this transfer case and I just wiggled it. And you already see it splitting right there. Um, so once it splits, it's going to be pretty easy to get out. So what I'm going to do is go and take these nuts off. Now you want to be cautious, um, since I don't have a jack underneath of it. You just want to be cautious not to move it around a bunch. So it doesn't slide out of there. Okay, now those nuts are out, this transfer case. The only thing that's holding on is it's kind of them threads on the studs. So I'm going to get underneath of it. Just like so. And it is out. Not that bad at all. We have the 231 out and then we have the 241. Um, obviously, looking at them next to each other, you can tell the 231 is much smaller than the 241. Uh, also, you're going to notice that this has a flange rather than a yoke on the, uh, on the back of the transfer case. Now, I will be switching um, this front yoke uh, with the flange. I believe. Uh, they make flanges for the fronts. I'm pretty sure on the 231s they do not. Um, so I'm gonna run flange set up front and back. Um, there are a couple things that I know aren't gonna work out. Um, a lot of the hookups aren't gonna work. Probably just the vent hose will be the only thing that's gonna work. Um, I'll take you through um, how to wire everything up and also for your speedo and stuff like that. Um, now I will have to do something different um, I don't know if I need an adapter or not, I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm pretty sure the Novak cable uh, shifters will not hook up. I have to buy something different um, for this to work. Um, so other than that, like I said, there's a few things that are going to have to switch. The biggest thing is I'm trying to run a flat skid plate, and with the size difference, it's going to make it quite hard. 
So I'm probably going to do some tub cutting or at least hitting the tub up uh, to make some more room. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put the transfer case in and get it up so it's fitting. Once it's up there and it's fitting where I want it, I can get the flat skid plate on, then we'll start hooking things up. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time hooking this stuff up till I get it where I want it. So let's go ahead and put this transfer case and mount it to the transmission. Okay, T case is in. Um, kind of a pain, but it's okay. It's in. Um, so, kind of already when you look up here, you can already see where some issues are going to be because this thing's a little bit taller. Um, you know, right in this general area, probably going to have to beat up. That's okay. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, you know, there are some other issues. Um, I believe the skip plate mount's going to be an issue. Um, as well, but we can fab something up because um, this is sticking down a little bit further, it looks like. So let's go ahead, we're going to jack it up and see where the issues begin. The area that I'm having trouble with right now is right here, which is kind of where your console would be, directly behind the shifter. Um, so it goes straight and then the tub actually goes down a couple inches and then back. Um, give you a better look here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this right in here, and then I'm, when I I'm going to put metal back in, I'm just going to come straight back to this hole right here, straight back, and then on close that in, and that'll give me enough room for that transfer case um, to pop up inside the body. So this is the piece I cut out. Now this is doubled up here. Um, there's an inner and a or a lower and an upper, I guess, however you want to say it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the transfer case up here, make sure that it clears, make sure I don't have to cut any more down. Um, if that's all I've got to cut, uh, this won't be too bad at all. So I'm not sure if I got to go a little wider though. So and then once I get the transfer case up where I want it. I will build this back off of it because I want to make sure that I get the transfer case where it needs to be and then build off and leave some clearance in there. Alright, so the next issue I'm running into um, I'm clearing the tub now, but the um, uh, the mount for the transfer case lever is hitting underneath. So I'm about to move this, <clears throat> um, which I figured I would have to in the beginning. I could kind of tell it was going to hit. Um, so I'm going to go do it is take these bolts out around it and then pull this out. And then we'll put the transfer case back up in there and check for clearance. And then we'll deal with this at a different time. So we are underneath the, or above the frame rails, um, about a half inch, and that's where I kind of want it, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, had to obviously cut up above the tub there, um, got plenty of clearance up there. I had to take a piece of 
small piece of tubing and put up on top of the transmission um, and then kind of jack um, it up probably about 10 times or so to just smash that tub up a little bit um, kind of where it goes up to the firewall um, so that's clearing and then I had to cut where the stick comes through into the cab um, had to cut that out just so that I could pop through a little bit but other than that we are good um, so now all this stuff that I cut out I'm gonna go ahead and box that back in here um, not right now but at some point um, so it'll keep the structure of the tub right there and then it'll keep stuff from coming up through there as well other than that though it's looking pretty good it took a little bit of work um, I just kept cutting a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more until I finally got it. Um, and everything's got plenty of clearance. The only issue is I'm going to have to beat the tub up a little bit right here um, where the yoke's at because that's pretty close. And then I'll have to figure something out for the shifter as well because it's right up there. Um, what I'm actually thinking about doing is maybe just doing a fixed shifter right off the transfer case through the tub so there'll be no cable, no linkage whatsoever. It'll be straight to the transfer case. So, so right now I'm going to go and drop this down and then we'll work on um, hooking everything up. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is just go ahead and snip um, the plug off of the 241. Um, so you got a red wire, a black wire, and a brown wire. So we're just going to go and snip all those off, just like so. Take that off, and then we got our three wires. So what I'm going to do next is just go ahead and strip these down, and that way we can go ahead and solder them to our plug. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is attach a connector to the transfer case. Now we're doing this because the wiring is obviously different for the transfer case to the Jeep, so we need to change that. But in order to do that, we're gonna to have to change the plug out. So I have a four-way plug. Um, you don't need a four-way plug, you can use just a three-way plug. I'm just not gonna use this fourth one. Now, a lot of people have these laying around in their garage, especially if you have a trailer. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up now it doesn't really matter what wire you're using because none of these are going to match up to the colors of the transfer case. But when we attach it to the Jeep, uh, the other connector, we just want to remember which wires are where. And I'll go over those wires with you, uh, which one needs to go where here um, after I hook this up to the transfer case. So the first thing I'm going to do is hook this one up to the transfer case and then we'll get underneath the Jeep. Okay, so I went ahead and hooked up one plug to the transfer case. Now like I said, this is a four, -way, four plug. Um, you only need a three, so I'm just not going to use this fourth water, uh, wire. All I'm going to do is put some shrink wrap on the end, uh, just so it can't ground on anything. Um, and then I went ahead and hooked up the plug to the Jeep as well. And I'll go over the wiring, uh, what goes where. Um, once I get the transfer case back in there, I'll show you guys what's all hooked up. So the next issue that you're going to run into on the transfer case is, if it's a big deal or not to you, is the four-wheel drive light. So I'm going to go and switch the sensor out. Um, there's a couple threads um, on um, Google or on Pirate uh, of different sensors that you can use. So I'm going to try one that I got from um, Rock Auto and if it doesn't work then I'll just go ahead and get another one. I think you can get one from Napa as well. So there's two things that I ordered from Rock Auto. The first is a PT2, uh, sorry, PT724 and what that is is a new pigtail because the sensor that I'm going to be running uh, will not work with the Jeep uh, pigtail. So, so we're going to change that out. It's very simple, just two wires. And then I ordered a, if you can read that right there, it's a part number, looks like 1S4219. And this is just a switch. Um, the thing that I'm wondering though is if, um, this is going to be long enough, so I don't know if that's going to come out anymore. I don't think it does because um, the one that came off is quite a bit longer. And that might be one issue that people were having is it wasn't um, reading correctly or when you hit the lever, it was very easy to come on even if you just pump the lever. So we're going to give this a try. 
uh, when installing make sure that you have this applied overing to put back on there and this is very simple it just screws back into the hole um, I want to say the ones at Napa, I think they're called, I think these are called like a doorman switch or something like that. Um, so we're going to give this a try and see if this will cause the four wheel drive light to work properly. So like I said, that's just going to screw in there and then the new pigtail is just going to snap on here just like so. And then we're just going to hook these two wires up to the two wires that are on the Jeep. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, throw the transfer case back in, we'll plug everything in and see if it works. Okay, so the 241 swap is complete, all except for um, the four-wheel drive lever. So I haven't hooked that up yet. My thoughts are to just go straight off the transfer case with no cables and no linkage, and mainly because there's not a lot of room underneath there since it's flat, um, going with a flat skid plate, it's pretty tight. And then with the yoke being right there, it makes it a little difficult. But that's my plan. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that yet or not. I'm gonna wait till I get some different seats in the front, kind of see where those sit, and see how much room I have. The only issue I had when I did this swap was the part that I ordered for the four-wheel drive switch from Rock Auto did not work. Um, it continuously just said four-wheel drive, um, no matter if it's in neutral or too high. Um, so what I did is I looked up some other parts that people have used and I got one from Napa and I went through all the levers and it seems to be good to go. So time will tell, but that seems to be the biggest issue. So I will give you guys a close-up of this part number and the name of it, which is just a four-wheel drive um, switch, so it's nothing too crazy. So, uh, change out the same way, you just thread the other one out, thread this one in, hook up the wire, it's very simple. So I'm gonna give you that at the end of the video. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, check out my other videos, and hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching.